Hello, today we will be reviewing the PowerColor HD 4770. This particular video card has 512 megabytes of GDDR5. Let's look at some of the technology it supports. It's very hard to read these technologies from your screen, so I'll be reading these to you. This video card supports DirectX 10.1 and Shader Model 4.1. It also has a 128-bit memory interface, PCI Express 2.0 support, Crossfire X, which allows multi-GPU support for highly scalable, scalable performance. It also has an on-chip HDCP, and also supports up to 24x, yes, I said 24x, custom filter and DA listing. This GPU has the first 40 nanometer process which allows for better overclocking and it will run stable at cooler temperatures. <coughs> it also supports a Vivo HD video and display technology which delivers advanced audio video processing and display connectivity for high definition entertainment solutions. It also supports HDMI and 7.1 surround sound audio on a video card through HDMI, which is very nice. Let's look at the video card itself. <coughs> Inside the box, it's a very basic box. Nothing on it at all. So let's open it up. There is the video card, packaged in an anti-static bag. Let's take a look. Put this aside. And then, off like this, there's a bunch of goodies. Let's take this. Take a look at this at one by one. S video cable. DVI to VGA adapter. HDMI to DVI adapter, black box for free, which also includes data feed source, nine point five catalyst beta drivers, and a quick installation guide in multiple languages. Now let's take a closer look at the video card itself. <sighs> this video card has a dual slot cooler. This cooler is actually made of aluminum designed to look like copper. So be wary when thinking it's copper, but it's not. This fan cools pretty good. I will go to the temperatures and other stuff like that later in the video. Six pin power connector. PCI Express right there down there with a lock so it doesn't fall out. The back here, this video card comes with two DVI ports and S video. They also come with covers on all of them. And also a cover on the Crossfire X, which is very, that's very nice actually. All of the current HD 4770s have the same design, just with a different sticker. Let's take a look at the back. Regular design. It's a pretty thin uh, PCB compared to a motherboard, so watch out when handling this video card. Now, let's get to the benchmarks. 
This video card will fit in most cases as it is almost 8.5 inches long, which will not cause a problem for most computers. Let's check out how loud this baby is. Right now it's running at automatic settings, which basically means it's running at 32% fan speed. So however big the load is, it will change the fan speed to cool it properly. Alright, I'm in Cal's control center and we're going to change fan speed to 20%. Please note that there is also one fan in the system, the CPU fan. That's 20% right there. Fifty percent fan speed. Seventy percent fan speed. Eighty five percent fan speed. Hundred percent fan speed. Now back to automatic settings. Benchmarks. All of the benchmarks are done at stock settings for the video card, except for 3D Mark 06 and Vantage, so I get the maximum possible result. Let's get to it. Crisis Warhead Ambush Level, 1600 by 1200 gamer settings, no AA or anti stropic filtering, 28.18 FPS. Call of Duty 4 Warpig Level from the campaign, 1600 by 1600 by 1200, highest possible settings, full AA. 55 FPS. Nice. Race driver grid from the Akutuma track. Drift. 1600 by 1200. Highest possible settings. Full AA. 46 FPS average. Counter Strike source from the video stress test that's built into the game. 1600 by 1200. Fully maxed out. Full AA. 165 FPS. Follow 3. Megaton and Arena area. 1600 by 1200. Full AA. Um, Highest possible settings, 50 FPS, very good. Fair 2, Project Origin, starting level, 1600 by 1200, highest possible settings, full AA, 32 FPS, seems kind of weird. Um, Company Heroes, built in stress test into the game, uh, 1600 by 1200, fully maxed out, uh, full AA, 80.5 FPS. Um, the 3D marks are going to be run at 830 and 850 for the memory and 830 for the core, just a reminder. So 3D Mark 6 default settings. I wanted a goal of 10,000 and got 10,375. Pretty good. 10,375 3D Marks. 3D Mark Vantage. On the performance settings, I got uh, P6100 10. So 6,110. Okay. Uh, GPU score 6,968. CPU score 4,462. On the entry level settings, you can see that my CPU is clearly bottlenecking my video card. Um, it got a total score on the entry level settings of 11,747, GPU score of 25,161, and a CPU score of 4,519. Overclocking inclusion. This card overclocks very well since it is a 40 nanometer process. I suggest you should buy this card if you're looking for a hundred dollar video card. This is a great card that will perform well in most games, even in crisis, at most resolutions. This card outperforms the 9100 GT and the HD4030 both in everything. Pros of this card, um, cheap for the performance, decent cooling for the nanometer process, uh, GDDR5, cons, um, there are really none. Something that I'd be really picky about, uh, get some more uh, different coolers in the market, because right now there's only one cooler and that's the reference cooler. Overall I would give this card an 8.5 out of 10, and also for overclocking. This card runs at 830 for the core and 858 for the memory very well. And it, it is stable, but it completes with lots of errors via OCCT. 
you can get this card stable at 805 for the core and 825 for the memory with no errors at all via OCC TT. Thank you for watching and subscribe so I keep making more videos for you. Have a nice day.